Welcome to Ruger Tech Tips. I'm going to show you how to disassemble the Ruger LCR revolver. Before we begin, I want to make sure the revolver is completely unloaded. Also, I don't have any ammunition in my work area, so I'm going to press the release button, point the revolver in a safe direction, going to open up the cylinder, and I can check that, make sure all the chambers are empty, and I, I don't have any ammunition in my work area. To take this apart, we're going to need a couple, a couple tools. You're going to need a pair of vice grips. You're going to need a handle with a number 10 Torx bit. You may need a standard screwdriver, maybe not, depending on which version of the LCR you have. Um, a ejector support tool. You could also use spent casings or possibly dummy rounds, but the ejector support tool is ideal. You're going to need a 1 16th punch a cleaning patch, and of course a good pair of safety glasses. Now to begin with, what we're going to cover is not in the owner's manual. But we've had a number of customers take these apart and we thought it appropriate to do a video on how to do a proper disassembly and of course reassembly. So we recommend that you watch the entire video before you attempt to do this. And if you're uncomfortable with it at all, don't do it. Um, get it to a qualified gunsmith or better yet, get it back to us and whatever service you need, we, we can take care of that for you. So uh, watch this in detail. So first thing you're going to do is you're going to remove the grips. And the early versions of this just used a standard flat blade screwdriver. Now the later versions used the same number 10 Torx bit. So I'm going to use that and I'm just going to unscrew this bottom screw, remove it and then remove the grips. From there, there's another number 10 Torx bit screw that runs through this. Not all models have this upper screw. The, it varies by model, so if yours doesn't have that, it's no big deal. But if yours has that, again, it's a number 10 Torx bit. This has very little torque value on it, so be very careful unscrewing this. Very lightly, this is going to unscrew. Once you have the screw loose, it's a matter of, you can get your fingernails on that and you can pull that screw out. The nut on the back side can be a little tricky to get out if you go in with a screw and just re-thread that and use the screw to pull that out. I leave those together so it doesn't, that way they don't get away from you. Next we've got this screw on the front and this screw on the front holds everything together and, and this is where it, start, it starts to get tricky. We have an upper and a lower so we have our cylinder frame and we have our trigger control housing below that. We have our hammer spring pushing, the, trying to push those two apart. So the moment we start taking the screw out, we're going to get some force from our hammer trying to separate the two. We don't want to separate it right then, so we, we've got to hold it together. The screw also holds our crane and cylinder in place. So once we remove the screw, those can come out. So we're going to swing the cylinder out, and with your right hand, you're just going to reach in, and I, I use these two fingers, and I'm going to squeeze that together. I'm keeping that, that tension together. Our cylinder latch in here, when we separate the two halves, it's connected to our fire control housing below, but it can get caught in the cylinder frame and wants to go with that. So we got to be careful that we, we're going to pull the trigger slightly to lower that as our cylinder latch when we separate these two halves. If it stays with the, this upper cylinder frame and kicks up and you pull them apart, you're going to bend that cylinder latch spring in 90 degrees. You're going to destroy the spring, guarantee it. So we've got to be very, very careful how we take this apart. So I'm going to squeeze this together. So I'm holding these two together. I take my, my number 10 Torx bit wrench. This front screw is 23 to 27 inch pounds of torque on there. So it's, it, it's a little snug. It's not crazy. So it'll be a little bit stiff when you go to do this. And I'm just holding these two halves together. I hold this upright so my cylinder and crane stay you know, stay in place so they don't fall out. So there's my screw. I've removed that. And if it will stay on that Torx bit, fantastic. I'm going to take the cylinder crane assembly. I'm going to set that aside. So now here's the tricky part. I'm going to grab this with my left hand and I'm going to come down and put that on my trigger. So I'm going to compress back with the trigger to separate these. And I'll show you the, the wrong and the right way to do it. So hopefully what you're going to do is you're going to compress that back, lower the cylinder latch, get it out of the cylinder frame, and separate the two halves. Okay? And I can, I can bring those two apart. If this got hung up, so if the cylinder latch stayed with that, you may be only crack that open a very little amount and the two are hung together. At that point, you would take your 1 16th punch 
and push out that your, your cylinder latch pivot pin and you can get it out that way. You may have already destroyed the spring at that point. If this, if this cylinder latch turns 90 degrees, it's going to crunch the spring. Okay? Highly recommend, if you're going to take this part, have a spare spring on hand. So, next step is you're just going to pull the trigger. We're going to take out the transfer bar. This just comes out. You pull the trigger to the rear, transfer bar just comes right on out. So I can get that out of the way. In the front, or on the bottom here, I have two pins. They're identical. They, 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 you can't mix them up. It doesn't matter. One is for the cylinder latch. One is the trigger pivot pin. So we're going to start at the front. We're going to work our way to the rear. So I'm just going to take my 1 punch. I'm going to push that pivot pin through. doesn't matter left or right. Right to left doesn't, doesn't matter. I tend to work left or right, doesn't, but it doesn't matter. So that's going to get out your cylinder latch, and there's that little spring that easily can get bent up. So I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to set the pivot aside. If I come to the rear, inside here, I've got my trigger, the pawl. I have a spring. And inside the spring, there's a little bushing in there. It's a little hard to see from this angle. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to push the pivot pin through. That's going to fall out. I'm going to lift this up. It allows me to take the pawl out. I can get out the spring and the bushing. That comes out. To get the trigger out, you, will, you have to go all the way forward, lift it up and out. Because I'll show you in here, there's a kind of an interesting cutout inside the frame that you've got to go all the way forward with the trigger, and then you rotate it out. If you look down inside, you can see it's wider at the front and it's narrow at the back. So the trigger's got to go all the way forward, then out. All we have left here is the hammer, there's a pivot, a strut, and there's a seat at the bottom. So we're, we're going to push that out. So I'm going to compress that hammer down to my thumb and push the pivot straight on out. So the pivot comes out, then my hammer and strut comes out, the spring and the seat comes out, and there's a little pivot on the strut, what we call the dog bone, that comes out. And that's it on my fire control, that's everything inside there. So I'm just going to set all that to one side. I'm going to take a look at my cylinder assembly. I, I would say if you do not need to take the cylinder assembly side, do, if you do not need to disassemble this, don't. But if, if it's something you're going to do, let me. there's some, some do's and don'ts about this. You're going to need a way to support the ejector. If you go to spin off your ejector rod and this is up at all, you'll destroy the cylinder. Okay, so you need some support. You can use an ejector support tool. Uh, you can get these, uh, we got this particular one through Brownells. You could also use spent casings or dummy rounds. We would sort of accomplish the same thing, but you need to keep the ejector in place. Your ejector rod, which holds this together, is a left hand thread. So you're going to turn it the opposite way in order to loosen it. So uh, it's, you're going to turn it clockwise to loosen it. Okay, it seems, it seems backwards, but, but it is a left-hand thread. So the way to do this is I'm going to put this on my ejector support tool. I'm going to take a piece of small uh, cling patch, and I'm just going to get on this. You could use a regular vise. Uh, it's easier for, for this purpose to use a set of vise grips. And I'm, I'm, I'm squeezing tight, but not crazy. You don't want to crush the rod. Make sure you don't get your vise grips up around your crane. I've seen that done and you'll just because you, you'll destroy the crane. So you're going to just turn this very gently clockwise to loosen it up and you'll, you'll feel when it goes. Once, once it's loose, you can pretty much do it with your fingers. So I'm going to just unscrew this. This rod has a proprietary lock thread. So that, that lock thread that's on there is time sensitive. Okay, so once you take the ejector rod out, inside that we have our center pin rod and spring and you'll notice on one end of it there's a nail head shape on there and that faces to the rear. We then get our center lock pin which also has a nail head on the other end. So those two made up so that they'll run flat together so we can keep that like that. I can now take that off the ejector support tool, remove my ejector, I'm going to set that down. I'm going to immediately screw my ejector rod on my ejector. As I said, we use a proprietary 
thread lock on here and it's time sensitive, it's pressure sensitive. So what holds it in place is pressure. If this sits for less than five minutes without being threaded on there, it loses its ability to hang on to. So you would lose that, it wouldn't stay locked in as you're using the revolver, that ejector rod's gonna unscrew on you, it's gonna tie up the gun. So I'm gonna screw that right back down, get it snug, set it aside. So that'll buy me a little bit of time. Once that's done, I'm gonna take the crane out of the cylinder I can remove that. There's a spring inside there and there's a little bushing on the end of the spring. So I take that out, that little bushing, I can pull that off. So now you've completely disassembled your LCR. Next videos will be for cleaning and also reassembly. So thanks for watching this Ruger Tech tip.